good day students facing against time for students in pathology in this session we shall be seeing a few short notes look at this problem problem based questions are now the rule of the day a 52 year old male with a history of incessant smoking developed bouts of cough which lasted for months this complaint was recurrent annually he gradually developed difficulty in breathing what is your diagnosis what are the clinical and pathological manifestations of this disease what would be the complications if the patient does not abstain from smoking yes i am sure that most of you have made the diagnosis so the clinical picture of it the diagnosis is good chronic bronchitis definition it is a clinical condition presenting as persistent cough with sputum for at least 3 months in a year for two consecutive years so a protective cough for 3 months in a year for at least two consecutive years is the definition for chronic bronchitis the pathogenesis is it is initiated by dust particles such as cigarette smoke or industrial dust it is associated with smoking to that extent it is called as a smoker's lung this we had seen earlier also a condition called chronic obstructive pulmonary disease it encompasses a few diseases such as chronic bronchitis emphysema and bronchial asthma and also you find that there is a considerable overlap between these diseases at one particular point almost all the three appear to converge also appreciate the bluish tinge that is intentionally given for the chronic bronchitis a chronic obstructive pulmonary disease you find that there can be a difficulty in either inhalation or exhalation or sometimes both a normal tracheobronchial tree is shown here and there is a epithelium with a little bit of mucus so you find that there can be abundant mucus secretion that can be there in some conditions in others there can be a hypertrophy of the smoke muscle so this can be a feature of chronic obstructive pulmonary disease in emphysema it is more towards the alveoli what are the features of chronic bronchitis you find that there is marked hyperemia and edema hyperemia is congestion and edema is swelling there is mucus or mucopurulent secretion sometimes the bronchi themselves may be filled with such a secretion causing a cast a cast is an outlay of the entire structure histologically there is a hyperplasia of the mucus glands there is a condition called the reed index which we shall be seeing is significant in chronic bronchitis apart from that squamous metaplasia or dysplasia can develop and finally there is obliteration of the bronchial tree with mucus so hyperemia and edema cast in the bronchi mucus gland hyperplasia leading to an increase in the red index histologically 
a squamous metaplasia or a dysplasia and obliteration of the bronchial tree with mucus these are the features of chronic bronchitis this term will come to us repeatedly what are the hazards of cigarette smoking can be a question in environmental pathology but let us see what happens in pulmonary pathology it can be just an irritation because of which there can be a squamous metaplasia there can be a chronic bronchitis which we are seeing an emphysema mainly centri asena type of emphysema a bronchogenic carcinoma these are all some of the pulmonary diseases associated with cigarette smoking again what happens to the lungs in chronic obstructive pulmonary disease a normal air base over here you find that there is a terminal of the respiratory bronchiole a free flow of air is present and the smooth muscle also is quite thin but see what happens in a case of copd there is a difficulty in the air entering and leaving there is a hyperplasia of the smooth muscle and there can be some amount of fibrosis which can be present these are some features of chronic obstructive pulmonary disease please have it in mind the reed index which we had mentioned earlier it is a ratio of the mucus glands see all these glands are the mucus glands this is the respiratory epithelium and lower down there is the cartilage the thickness of the mucus glands to the thickness between the epithelium and the cartilage that particular ratio is called the reed index normally it is up to 0.4 whereas in a case of chronic bronchitis it is more than 0.5 and it is significant reed index by itself can be asked as a question and you people can draw this diagram i repeat once again epithelium and then the mucus glands the thickness of the mucus glands this is normal over here sometimes the entire thickness can be filled with mucus glands what are the manifestations of this particular disease the clinical manifestation it is more of a clinical disease rather than a pathological one you find that the patient is cyanotic and he has a bluish hue hue means color and as a result of which he is called a blue bloater he is called a blue bloater there is a recurrent cough with expectoration and there is a retention of carbon dioxide due to which oxygen therapy might be needed respiratory acidosis is a complication and as mentioned earlier it is associated with cigarette smoking clubbing of the fingers might be present and if it is not treated the patient can go in for a cardiac enlargement and a right heart failure a cardiac enlargement and a right heart failure so look at this picture over here again we are recapitulating associated with smoking the patient is bloated he has got a cyanotic hue he has got difficulty in breathing and at the same time you find oxygen therapy is needed so these are all some of the features of chronic bronchitis we had seen emphysema earlier so emphysema the patient is a pink puffer whereas here it's a blue bloater and what are the other differences between emphysema and chronic bronchitis bronchitis patient is relatively younger the dyspnea is mild copious amount of sputum copious amount of sputum in emphysema the sputum is scanty infection is common in bronchitis and you find if it is untreated the patient can go in for a cor pulmonale cor pulmonale is a heart failure secondary to a respiratory disease and you find that the heart itself can be slightly enlarged because of the increased load 
large heart. On the contrary, you find an emphysema, patient is older and breathing is very difficult, sputum is scanty, occurs in the terminal stages of the illness. And you find that there is not much of an airway resistance, but the lungs become hyperinflamed or inflated, hyperinflated, and the heart is relatively small. These are the differences. Please buy hard these tablet columns because it can be useful in both the answers. We had completed that. I hope you are clear with the first case of the day or the first short form. The next one is, you find that there is a 45 year old male working in an industry manufacturing roofing material for factories for a period of 20 years. He has been working for 20 years. He has been brought to the hospital with respiratory symptoms. The x-ray showed radio opaque lesions covering both the lungs. And the sputum on microscopy showed dumbbell structures. So what is your diagnosis? 45 year old male, 20 years duration, roofing material is a factory and is brought with respiratory symptoms. X-ray is covered with radio opaque material and the sputum showed dumbbell structures. What is your diagnosis? And discuss the pathogenesis and the lesions of the disease and what are the other associated complications. I'm sure you people will be able to make the diagnosis. In fact, many of you have already done. You have messaged me the answer and you are right. You find that this is over here, this is a factory and there are the sheets that are being manufactured. The patient develops all these symptoms and the diagnosis is asbestosis. An important question that has been repeatedly asked as a short note, a little difficult compared to others. It comes under the group of disorders called as occupational lung disease. And these itself have got numerous disorders. It can be asbestosis, it can be silicosis, it can be berylliosis, so on and so forth. And the asbestosis itself can lead to pneumoconiosis. It is an occupational disorder, disorder with pulmonary manifestation. And there will be fibrosis that is called as pneumoconiosis. Additions between the layers of the pleura can be seen and a flattened plaque can be present. An important complication will be bronchogenic carcinoma. Another important complication is mesothelioma. Both can be present in asbestosis. But please do remember bronchogenic carcinoma is three times more common in asbestosis than mesothelioma. Whereas mesothelioma is also commonly found in asbestosis. The other sites are peritoneum. The types of fibers. It will be better that we do remember some of these fibers in order to highlight our answer. There are two main types of fibers, chrysotile and amphibole. Chrysotile and amphibole. And of the amphiboles, there are two types, mainly crocidolite and amosite. Crocidolite and amosite. Amphiboles are particles which can fracture, they can break, therefore they will go into the alveoli. And crocidolite is more carcinogenic. Please remember these names. Look at these fibers over here. They are all elongated. And when a fiber is very long, it will not cause much of a damage. In fact, even particles more than five microns are filtered by the upper respiratory tract. Particles which are very slow and very small can go into the lung, but they will be breathed out. So there is no problem. It is only the intermittent particles that will get caught in the 
alveoli. More than 3000 industries or industrial products are there which are associated with asbestosis. Insulation is there. Any of the roofing material has asbestos sheets. Brake lining in the two wheelers and four wheelers. Water conduit or pipes. All these are different examples of industries which are associated with asbestosis. And generally, the clinical manifestation is because of this. I would like you to kindly follow this because you can write it in your medicine as well. The quantity has to be abundant. It is not a small quantity. There is required, so a lot of material is needed. If it is going to be buoyant, buoyant means it floats. It goes inside, it comes outside. If it is soluble, nothing happens. But if it remains as such, it is irritable and it will lead to various manifestations. And asbestosis is usually associated with smoking. It increases the risk of bronchogenic carcinoma several times. Several times the risk is increased in a smoker who has got asbestosis also. And what is the actual mechanism? You are expected to write this. It is phagocytosed by the macrophages. You will be seeing it in the subsequent picture. And it also attracts the macrophages. It is chemotactic. It can reach the alveoli, the interstitium, or the pleura, and it will cause a fibrosis. And the macrophages themselves will produce a growth factor called macrophage derived growth factor. The rest I will show you in the next picture. This is an example of an asbestos body. You find that it is elongated and it is dumbbell shaped. You find that the edges are enlarged, whereas in the middle it is thin. This is a dumbbell shape. And it is also brown in color because of the iron pigment. It is called as asbestos body. Pathogenesis, it is here. The asbestos fiber, they combine with the iron to form the asbestos bodies. And these will lead to the production of free radicals. Please remember this word free radical. It has got an unpaired electron or a proton. So hydroxyl is one. There are the other free radicals, hydrogen peroxide and oxygen radical. And you find that once it is there, it goes inside. It is phagocytosed by the macrophages. And it will lead to various damage such as lipid peroxidation and DNA damage. And what are the cells it can damage? It can damage the epithelial cell. So there can be metaplasia, dysplasia, etc. It can lead to proliferation of the fibroblasts. And there will also be a change in the mesothelium, which can result in a mesothelium. So these are the important things. The important mediators are mentioned here. You can just go through them. Asbestos fibers, macrophages, damage to the various cells given here. Regarding the manifestation, you find that the disease is very gradual. It is not like an infection wherein immediately the patient develops it. It is gradual. In fact, very, very, very gradual. It takes more than 20, 10 to 20 years for the disease to manifest completely. It is incapacitating. The patient is literally crippled. He cannot breathe. And it can be diagnosed by means of using a polarizing microscopy or an electron microscopy. Electron microscopy, I had shown you the picture earlier. And this is what we people see. When we find dumbbell coated structures along with hemocytin pigmentation, then we call it as asbestos body. Asbestos along with hemocytin. Without asbestos, it is called as a ferruginous body. Ferruginous body is only iron. And the malignancies that can be caused are bronchogenic carcinoma three times more common than mesothelioma. And mesothelioma itself can be in the pleura, in the peritoneum, or 
very rarely you find that aspirus of can lead to gastrointestinal malignancy because of ingestion probably so remember these these malignancies we people should remember and this is one you people can guess what it is before we go to the next lesion i'll just describe it i find that the lung is being totally encased or circumscribed by means of an opaque lesion both the lungs are surrounded so this is what is your diagnosis you find that the tumor is not only surrounding it is infiltrating into the adjacent parenchyma also so obviously it is a malignant lesion this is a mesothelioma <clears throat> a mesothelioma it can be an ultra short note or a short note itself a question usually we find it difficult as students but it is not as difficult as it is so you find it as a tumor that is surrounding the entire lung involving the pleural cavity and here i find it is much larger that is creeping into the parenchyma the sites where we can find a mesothelioma include the pleura pericardium and peritoneum three p's you can remember pleura pericardium and peritoneum and there are two types of mesothelioma one is benign benign is okay relatively harmless and we'll be finding only spindle shaped cells just like the fibrous tissue it is also called a fibroma benign mesothelioma it is small 1 to 2 cm and attached to the pleura and there need not be any underlying asbestosis a benign tumor the other one is a malignant mesothelioma once i say benign that should be malignant malignant mesothelioma it is found on the pleura both the parietal and visceral pleura can be affected and it is common in asbestosis common in asbestosis the lung can be completely ensheathed or it can be in some focal areas alone and the color is it is grayish pink in color a pinkish tinge is always seen even in the pictures we had seen and microscopically we will be seeing two types of cells namely spindle cells and epithelial cells spindle cells that means they are elongated cells with tapering ends and epithelial cells that is why it is called a biphasic pattern this can be an mcq for you a biphasic pattern is classically seen in and it is a mesothelioma and the tumor marker can be carcino embryonic antigen carcino embryonic antigen i look at this picture taken from illustrator pathology i find that there are elongated spindle shaped cells this is a tumor one and also there is a glandular epithelium so both are there this is also tumor this is also tumor since both are there it is called a biphasic pattern it is called a biphasic pattern and see externally it can completely surround or it can be in focal areas the mesothelium the other sites are the pericardium peritoneum please remember this it is a question for you in fact it has been asked f caristo gratias tibi